Good morning, everyone. It's so great to be with you today. I'm Stephanie Winslow, and this is Cup of Hope. If you are looking for hope, uh, you can find it here Monday through Friday at 6.45 Central, 7.45 Eastern, and I have no idea what the other time zones are. <laughs> Go backwards. And uh, it's just so fun to be with you this morning and um, to be sharing a message from the Word of God. And I say this almost every time, and it's really the only place that we can find lasting hope. It's the only place that we can find a hope that will carry us through even our darkest times. So thank you so much for being with me. My faithful viewers are popping on, and um, if you are new, if this is one of your first times being with us this morning, um, I'm just delighted that you have made it a, a priority, not just to be here with me, but um, to really just spend time with God and His Word and see what He has in store for you. Um, because it's, it's without question, uh, He will bring about good things in your life. So without further ado, let's lift up our cups and ask the Lord to fill us up with the hope that He has in store for us. So thank you, Lord, for the cup of hope um, and let's dig in today to his word. So this week, we started the week in Isaiah 9, 6, which um, was a prophecy of, of Jesus, what was to come um, for the Israelites, that, that there, he, there was a prophecy about Jesus coming as their Messiah and he would be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. And then yesterday we talked about Isaiah 25, 1, which is also a prophecy, um, and just kind of filling in more of the details. And it was this declaration, but a reminder that God is faithful to us. He is faithful to us. And so that we can declare that you are our God and we will praise you. And today we are carrying on in Isaiah, looking at um, Isaiah chapter 40, verses 10 and 11. And Yesterday we learned about God's faithfulness. Today we are going to talk about that God is our shepherd. Uh, and of course, this relates to Psalm 23. So just kind of all of these uh, verses, how they parlay into one another, how they work together. I love seeing how God's word, it, it supports itself, right? It's, it's the prophecies that are talked about in the Old Testament. We see them fulfilled in the New Testament. But today we're talking about Isaiah 40, verses 10 and 11. I'm going to read today from the New American Standard Bible, which says, Behold, the Lord will come with might, with his arms ruling for him. Behold, his reward is, in, is with him, and his recompense is before him. Like a shepherd, he will tend his flock. In his arm, he will gather the lambs and carry them in his bosom. He will gently lead the nursing ewes. Behold, the Lord will come with might in his arms. Behold, the Lord will come with might in his arms. I think it's a beautiful picture of, of God with his arms outstretched for us. And it says that he is coming with his reward for his reward um, and recompense before him. We are his reward and his recompense. We are what he is coming for. He's coming with his might, with his arms wide open and ruling with his mighty power and his arms are getting ready to just scoop us up into his presence, right? He's scooping us up into his presence and we don't have to wait until we get to heaven to, to be nestled into the bosom of God. We don't have to wait until heaven to be uh, wrapped up in his arms. We can have that experience now. And it always just blows my mind to think that God loved me so much and he loves you so much that he sees us as his reward, as the the payment for all the work that he has done. We are his great reward. And I don't know about you, but some days I think, really? Like, what do I have to offer God? Like, what is it that would make 
you want me so much that you see me not only as your daughter, but as your reward. I just think, wow, that's incredible. Um, yesterday I, I was in a conversation with someone and I, I referred someone to them and I, I got a reward back. It was like I was given an opportunity to receive a reward and it just caught me off guard because A, I don't usually win much of anything, but secondly, it was like, holy cow, you know, I it just totally caught me by surprise. I wasn't expecting to be given a reward for this referral that I gave for someone, um, but that was what happened and I was just, I was so delighted and that reward was given to me um, and I just think, Wow, like that's how God sees us. He sees us as his reward. And he, he knows that he's, you know, planning this all along throughout history that we would come to know him through Jesus Christ. But we get to be his reward. It's just such a beautiful picture. And then he says, like a shepherd, he will send his flock in his arms. He will gather them like the lambs. And a shepherd does a few different things. And I as I was preparing, I just kind of studied on this word shepherd. He tends the flock, which means that he cares and comforts them. He gathers them together. He assembles and he collects them. He brings them in like a huddle. A shepherd carries them. So if, if one is running off astray, he will go and chase after, but then he'll carry them back to the flock. That perhaps the those who are who are newer in their faith or the wounded uh, sheep among him, he would carry a shepherd would carry that flock with him. He leads, which means actually, uh, <laughs> this touched my heart because it leading when it says he leads us beside still waters in Psalm twenty three. It's the same word to lead here, which means to give rest or to guide to a watering place. He guides us to a watering place. He leads us beside the still waters. He leads us in, into these places where we will be watered, where he will give us rest, where he will um, give us the opportunity to find peace and calm and tranquility in his presence. He leads us to those places as our shepherd. Um, and then he leads the nursing ewes. So what I like about this is that, yes, he leads us to a place of rest, but we are all, uh, as men and women, believers of Jesus Christ, called to be nursing ewes, to be nursing mama sheep, right? That, that are looking at those around us in our circles of influence, and saying, who is it that I can build up and bring along into the fold of, of God? Who can I bring up as fellow brothers and sisters in Christ? Who is it that I'm supposed to be discipling? Who is it that I'm supposed to be um, pouring my, myself into? Who is it that I'm supposed to be cultivating a relationship with? Because we are all nursing use at some level, right? We are all nursing someone and the next generation of believers. And that was a beautiful picture to me because God does. He brings us to a place of rest. He gives us what we need. He leads us to this watering hole, a watering place. He fills our cup. He fills up our cup <laughs> so that we can then in turn not just hoard that hope or hoard what he has given us, but that we can then train up the next generation. And sometimes that generation, that next generation of believers, it may not be people younger than us. It may be people who are our peers. It may be people who are older than us. It doesn't really matter the age. It's, it's about looking at our what God has given us as an opportunity. It's an opportunity to, to pour out to that next generation. He is our good shepherd. And as a shepherd, he is leading us to waters that he will fill and refresh us. He's leading us to places that he will give us rest. But we have to recognize that, right? And allow him to lead us. And so often I know for myself, 
I want to be in charge. <laughs> I want to be the one in, in leadership. I want to be the shepherd. And so I don't get those opportunities from God sometimes because it's so much about me and what I'm trying to do as opposed to letting God take over. And so that's my prayer for us today, that we would really just find rest in Him today, recognizing that we are His his sons and daughters, and that he is bringing us into his bosom. But when he does that, it's also an opportunity to, for us to be refreshed so that we can be like the nursing you and, and cultivate that next generation of believers, the next, um, the, our circle of influence that we can pour out on them. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I just thank you so much for your word from Isaiah 10, uh, excuse me, verse Isaiah 40, verses 10 and 11. God, I thank you that you have given us these verses, that you have knit your um, Bible together, but that has all of these different verses that, um, that just piggyback on one another. And God, that when we want to know more about you, we can search and we will find you when we search with you with all of our hearts. That's what your word says in Jeremiah 29, 13. So God, thank you for your word. Thank you that you have given us um, not only this picture of you being our shepherd, but how we, as, um, as your followers and as your sheep, that we can also shepherd the next generations to come. We can pour out what other generations are looking for because you have filled us up with your love and grace and truth. So thank you, Lord, for that. I thank you for filling us with the hope of your word and the truth that we can find there. I thank you that your word is new. Your mercy is new every morning. And um, you always have grace to extend to us, God. And thank you that we are your reward, that we are your reward. And you are so pleased uh, that we have come into relationship with you. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Be blessed today, brothers and sisters. I hope that your cup is full this morning. And if it is, I pray that you take that cup and pour it out on those around you. Share hope with those in your life who might be hurting, who might um, just feel like they're they're in desperate need of a friend, um, someone to walk alongside of them. They're in need of truth and peace and comfort. Would you be that person for someone else in your life? Be blessed. Bye-bye.